Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to take a look at a nice, simple paint scheme for your human nobility Blood Bowl teams in the style of the Bogenhafen Baron's uniform. You can find the time codes for each stage of the paint scheme in the description below, so you can jump straight to these as needed, as well as affiliate links to all the equipment used and a PayPal wallet if you would like to donate to help support the Jamhammer channel. I've already started these minis off with an even all over coat of grey prime, just to establish a good texture for our subsequent layers to adhere to. You could use white or black for this, but I settled on grey because it's a decent halfway point between the two, which should give us a foundation of shading whilst not being too dark and making the uniforms appear drab. Usually, I'd opt to do the largest sections of a mini as well as the dark colours and work towards the smaller and paler details. However this time I'm opting to go straight in with a white paint here, Citadel's Corax White, as I want to work from the inside out. This is because these minis have these very small areas of recess on their cloth that would be quite difficult to get at if we painted the rest of the uniform first. So to make things a bit easier, I'm going to thin my white down and just cover over all of these slits in their clothing. This way we can work nice and quick and don't have to worry about messing up and having to correct over these detailed parts later. Since we have the white paint out, now would be a good time to catch any of these feather-like decorations on the human's armour too, such as our bodyguard here with this decorative piece on his armour, as well as one half of that shield emblem. We can also use this to paint in a few of the actual feathers that are adorning the helmets of the human nobility players. The uniforms are going to be a mix of this white colour and a dark pink, so now would also be a good time to paint in a few of the larger parts on your players' uniforms, such as the trousers for this imperial thrower. To add some variety, but still ensure that they all resemble the same team, you could mix and match these primary colours as you see fit. We can also do the same for these bows dotted about in their uniforms. I'll coat some of these in white now, as you can see, then leave some grey to paint with our dark pink colour next. Onto that pink colour now, and I'm using Screamer Pink for this. As mentioned, this is going on most of the larger bits of the uniform now they've got the recessed details already coated in white. I'm going to get some of those bows on our linemen here, as well as the majority of the cloth including those raised folds on the leg. Now comes the tricky part. These minis as sports players are very stripe heavy and there are a lot of thin lines to try and catch with alternating pink and white. Just try to get these as carefully as possible, but if we do slip up, we can go back over these later on when we're tidying up the mini. We also want to get the shield emblems on the back of their armour there, and the other half of any pinned to their front, as well as painting in the dark pink material for their helmets. Moving on now to a black paint, and I'm sticking with Citadel for most of this video for a change, and opting for a bad and black. This is getting thinned down then and applied to the leather armour of our minis, mostly their gloves and shoes. So on our lineman here, I'm going to paint her gloved hands with that evil looking knuckle duster. And then getting the shoes as careful as I can around those striped socks. We can also use this colour to add a little bit more detail to the plumes on our players, so just going to paint in the tips of a few feathers such as the one here on our lineman. Moving on now to a brown and a nice warm chestity brown like Mournfang will be great for some extra leather bits such as the ball being carried by our imperial thrower. We can then use this colour to add some more layers to the feathers such as I'm doing here by going back to that lineman from before now that the black tip has dried on her plume. And may as well use this colour while it's on the brush to paint the braids of her hair too. By all means mix and match these colours as you see fit with different tones and varieties for the feathers and hair. You may have noticed they are opted to paint the thrower's hair with a bad and black for instance. To that end, 
I'm going to throw in a few more shades of brown here to add in some more tones to make those feathers a bit more visually interesting. If you have a limited palette, no worries, you can just use the one brown for this, or mix paler tones with some added yellow, or if you've got a couple of browns, then you can use those in different sections like this. I decided that this will make a good hue for the rest of the leather bits too, so I'm opting to use the Vallejo Beastie Brown for all of the belts and straps on the barons here, but again, use whatever brown, or even black if you like, to paint in these details. A lot of the players have these belts around their waists, but be on the lookout for straps holding on gauntlets and armour and the likes too, such as on the bouncer's gloves here. Last brown now, another Vallejo, this time actually called Leather Brown, and I'm going to use this on the thrower's padded jersey like this, but this could just as easily be pink, white, or a different brown. Then, of course, using this last brown to get a few more areas on those feathers. Now, I said I was sticking predominantly to Citadel, but the only flesh tone and off-white bone colour I own are these Vallejo ones. I'm going to mix these about 50-50 in order to pick out the faces of my minis like this. As well as any parts of skin that are poking out between their uniforms and armour. As you can see this is a pale colour, and patches of that dark grey prime are quite clearly showing through. To fix this, I'm going to apply just one thin coat, wait for it to dry, then apply another thin coat to cover over this with a nice smooth finish. Now to move on to metallic, and we're back to Citadel with one of my favourite colours that they do, Retributor Gold. This is a great warm gold tone that you're definitely not going to get sick of, because it's pretty much going everywhere on these minis. So, going to water this paint down just a bit so it flows easily from the brush, and then applying this to the chest, shoulders, back, knee guards, gauntlets, basically everywhere that's armoured. You also want to be on the lookout for any extra adornments, such as the lines on the back and front, plus the shields on your player's helmets. Speaking of which, there's some extra bits of detail around the shield emblems on some players' chests too, like on our Bouncer Mini, so we want to make sure we give those a coat of gold too. This team is certainly boring on ostentatious when it comes to the amount of decoration on their uniforms. I'm going to switch over to a gunmetal metallic now, Citadel's Lead Belcher, and there's not too much to catch with this colour. Just a few accessories, such as the tankard clipped to one of the Imperial lineman's belts, plus the actual spiked bits of the knuckle dusters, like this. You can also use the gunmetal to pick out any buckles on belts, and maybe on this bouncer's shoe, so that it looks like it's got a metal toe cap. Last metallic now, and that's a silver colour. Switching back to Vallejo again for this, as I don't own a silver citadel, and this is just going to be used on these star emblems that you can find on the linemen and bouncer models. I'm going to switch back to matte colours again now, as just to make things a bit easier, the models all have these name badges pinned to the front of their armour that we want to paint in the off-white bone colour from before to make sure that these look appropriately papery. So we're just going to apply a thin coat of this to these areas, but again this is a pale colour so it will require at least two layers. Plus we can use this to pick out any bits of thread, like those on the ball, and any shoelaces that you can see on your players. I'm also going to use it to pick out the loincloth on this lineman model, as well as to catch the quill running down the centre of each of the feathers on all of our players. Final touch now with some Mephiston Red, as I just noticed that one of the bouncer models this one, has a purity seal looking thing, so this colour is going on the rosette, while the paper part was painted with that Vallejo bone colour in the previous stage. And there we go! Now's a great time to go back through your minis and check for any mistakes or parts you may have missed. For some reason, I had a real vendetta against this noble blitzer and forgot to paint any black on his shoes, gloves and feather, plus completely neglected to paint the striped socks, so going to correct these now. Much better! This mini is actually a good example of how you can mix and match the uniform. 
As you can see, with this one, I painted the interior of those vents with the pink, and the exterior with white, so that there's a bit of variety with the other players, but he's quite clearly still a Bogenhafen Baron. Once you're happy that you've got your team as neat as you can, it's time to move on to a bit of shade. I was tempted to save time here and mix brown and black together like I did for my orcs and goblins in their paint videos. However, since there's so much white cloth on our human nobility team, I didn't want to make the white too muddy by covering it over with brown wash. Applying these selectively instead then, and I'm going for Nolan Oil here instead of my usual army painted dark tone. And this wash is predominantly on the uniform. So any of the white or pink bits of the cloth like the bows, sleeves, trousers and jersey. This shade is also being applied to the black leather on the shoes and hands, plus the gunmetal parts such as the fist weapons. Keep this moving around so it doesn't pull, then allow a good hour or two for it to dry. Next we'll switch over to our brown wash, using Agrat's Earthshade here, but any will do, and this is going on all the other parts of your minis. So the armour and cloth are getting hit with this, as well as the exposed skin and hair, and those feathers festooned on the helmets. We want to catch the brown leather areas with this too, and coat any bits of the armour on the thighs or knees. Try to be careful with where you apply this. It's no problem if it slips onto the dark pink, but we want to keep it away from staining the white cloth. Leave this dry as well, and there we go! A team of Bogenhafen Barons painted up to tabletop standard pretty quickly and with a simple paint scheme. Once the wash has dried, we want to sort out their bases though. I'll pop a link in here where you can see a previous video from Jamhammer that covers a really easy way to fill the slots in the bases with modelling putty. Now we want to try and replicate the human blood bowl pitch, which is this green turf. First things first, I'm going to use this goblin green Vallejo paint just to paint a quick, thin layer over the top of our mini's bases like this. It doesn't have to be neat or really cover over the grey, as it's going to be covered over again in the next stage. We just want to make it look green enough that any gaps in our basing material won't stand out too much. Let that green dry for a few minutes. If you're doing a full team of 11 players here, then your first one should be ready by the time you finish painting your last one. Grab some PVA glue, I'm using this awesome PVA bond, and thin this down with some water. Then, using an old brush, apply this all over the top of the bases you've just painted green. Try not to apply this to your player's shoes, but if you do, no worries, it can be wiped away with some wet tissue paper or another wet brush. Then use something like this green flock. This one was included in the terrain set that I've linked in the description and works perfectly for this application. Pop this into something you can dip your models into, then swirl the bases around in the flock and tap away the excess. Let this dry too, then break out your black paint again and just apply a couple of thin layers around the edge of the base to neaten these up and finish off our models. You could also use your white paint, thinned way down, to draw out a few lines along the bases like this to emulate the effect of the pitch even more. So the human nobility team is ready to hit the gridiron and start scoring some touchdowns. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. There's plenty more that could be done to our minis to make them parade ready, such as going back over those colours and picking out the raised areas to re-establish the mid-tones. I'm going to add a hint of white into those colours too and highlight the edges as well to add in some extra depth between the shaded recesses. There'll be more Blood Bowl videos being released in the near future, so please do keep an eye out for new content coming soon to Jamhammer. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos available on the channel, including a few that are on screen now for you to click on. Thanks again for watching.